What's up guys, Nathan Sutton back with another video and today we're bringing you a topic that comes from one of our viewers. We actually had a call with this girl the other week and we thought it was such a great topic that we wanted to make a video about it because we thought a lot of you out there could relate or might be going through the same thing. Yeah, if you guys missed this in another video, we are now offering calls where we can try and help you through little problems, give you advice, um, things like that. And we've done a few and it's been really fun, like getting to know some of you guys and what you guys are going through and just trying to help and share whatever wisdom we may have come across in our 30 years of life. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, for sure. So if you want to book a call with us, we'll put the link in the description below to book one on our calendar. But let's jump into the question. And uh, her question was, I'll keep her name anonymous, but she says, I'm 17 and was in a relationship for eight months. We both thought it was best to end it because I'm planning on going to Bible college for ministry and he doesn't know if the Lord has called him to that. So she knew that she needed to end it, and um, but she is still very much in love with him and she's praying for wisdom and how to be patient and wait for God to fully show his will. And also wisdom on how to act around him since it's still weird to not be dating and when they see each other in church and work together in class, it's kind of awkward, I guess. So what are your thoughts on this topic, Sutton? Yeah, she was in a unique situation because I'm pretty sure this was her brother's best friend and family friend. So like she's known him forever, like their whole lives. And they're always around each other. Their other families are always doing things together. So that's super hard that they grew up together then they like kind of cross that line and was like, let's see how it is today. And now they're reverting back like, wait, no, now we got to be friends again, but still be around each other. Most people, they break up, they like never see each other again, but they are very much around each other. So that's what was tricky for her. Um, but yeah, she felt very strongly that she was called into ministry, which I think is awesome that God gave her that revelation. But she also felt very strongly that the person that she is intended to be with is supposed to be doing that with her. And he was he didn't feel called to that at this time. Who knows in the future, maybe he will. But at this time, he didn't feel called to that. So they kind of broke things off. She's going to be going to college somewhere else. And I thought that was so mature of her. Okay, first of all, in the, in the dating world right now, I feel like it's so common to say, well, I know I'm not going to end up with them, but I like having someone. I like having that connection. I like having someone to talk to and hang out with. So I know I'm not going to end up with them, but I'm just going to like play along, you know, still have them until I go up to school and then we'll break things off. But I really like that she was mature enough to say, I, she said that I love all those things, but I'm not going to string him along and I'm not going to play with his feelings and do that to him, mm -hmm. you know, because it will be more hurt in the long run, which is so true. And I thought that was like super wise of her to say that. I actually went through a similar situation where I had a girlfriend of five years leading into my freshman year of college, and I just knew that it wasn't God's will for us to be together. I couldn't really put my finger on it, but I kind of, but I, I would have said that I still was in love with her, even though I know Sutton doesn't like to hear that. <laughs> um, but it, it was very pain. It was like I intentionally or willfully put myself through a heartbreak so I had to call things off with her and lo and behold it led me to Sutton so I think uh, it you know it is super wise to if you feel like it's not God's will for your life to just nip it in the bud cut it off and then ultimately or hopefully God's will will be revealed for your life so I think that was awesome that she is doing that so yeah, great was, she was right because it was more hurt for him in the long run and it would also be more hurt for her if she were to wait so mm -hmm. saving them both from hurt was thoughtful and then something that i remember telling her so we did this call a while ago we need to start doing these videos like right after the call but something i remember telling her was if she feels like she can call it off with him and she feels okay which she does like she wants to be friends with him then he's not meant for her because i was telling her thinking about being with Nathaniel, 
like I would have tried anything to make it work. Like even if I was going to school in a different state like they were and we were going to be separated, I'd say, well, let's just give it a shot. Let's see what long distance is like and see if it can work. But she like wasn't even willing to do that. She doesn't want to do that. So I feel like that was made it clear for her that he's not her person, at least for now, because she's only 17. We were telling mm-hmm. her like so much can change. Oh, yeah. You know, we did our most growth from the years of probably like 16 to 21, like anywhere in that range. So much changes. You grow so much. And who knows? He may be called to ministry one day and he may want to move out to where she is and they may rekindle the flame. I mean, you never know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was telling her that to find peace knowing that, you know, when you're seeking God's will, I mean, what else can you do? You're seeking what God wants for your life. And if he really wants you guys to be together, he'll make it happen. Um and just to find peace in that. And like, I'm gonna make the the next step, the first step and just thinking where or where, God, where I think God wants me to go and just trusting that he'll take care of the rest and that he's not up there in heaven being like, darn, I wish, I really wanted them to get together, you know, but she's not doing it. I, I just don't believe that's how it works. So some advice Nathaniel gave to her, do you wanna share that? Oh yeah, so. Going into how to be friends, how do they be friends when they've, been dating how do they go, like go back to being friends so my biggest advice to her was to set up boundaries uh, or guardrails in such a way that's not going to tempt them to go to be stepping going in the wrong direction you know she was saying that when they're around each other she's fearful that there might be some temptation there uh going back into more of a, a boyfriend girlfriend relationship than a friendship And so I said, well, it's very important that, you know, you set up guardrails in such a way that prevents you from falling into that temptation. And that might look different for her than it is for him. But most importantly, that she is putting things in place to be in the most alignment with God's will as possible. And if that means not being in a relationship with him or not being in a romantic relationship, then she needs to ask herself, what is that? Maybe it's not even being in the same room with him. Maybe it's cutting off the alt ties altogether. Or maybe she finds that she can, you know, have conversations with him and everything's fine and they won't be going back in that direction. But I think ultimately it's, it's most important to set up guardrails for yourself to prevent you from falling back into the path that is what you believe to not be God's will. Yeah, and I think originally she may have had the plan to talk to him and ask him, like, what does he think? But Nathaniel was like, no, you tell him what you think. Like, mm-hmm. what you set up the guardrails because you know you, you know better than he knows you. Mm-hmm. And, like, for her to set her own rules and not just let him make the rules. Like, they both should be setting up their own guardrails and following those to respect each other. Yeah, because it's not so much important what the other person wants as it is for you to do what God's called you to do. Going back to respecting the other person's feelings. So like we said before, she's in a very unique situation where the, this guy is like family friends. He's her brother's best friend. Like he's always around. Normally in this situation, I would advise the person to just kind of not be around that person. Because, you know, you could say like, oh, we just want to be friends. But I just feel like one of you, one of you is going to be attracted to or want to be with the other. It's really hard for a guy and a girl, I think, to be really close friends without one of them developing feelings. Mm-hmm. So that's another thing in the turn in the way of like protecting the other person's feelings is if it is in your power to not be around them, I feel like you should do that for them, even if it's hard because they might still have feelings for you and it just makes it harder. Oh, yeah. Do you know of a good way to... Say they had ne- these people had never started a relationship with someone watching, but one of them likes the other, and the other one just wants to stay friends. They don't want to start dating. Like, how would you suggest the person that doesn't want to start dating tells or shows the other person, like, I'm not interested in that, I just want to be friends, like, in a nice way? Well, I think it'd be very important to be really clear, you know, and open in that communication. So... If someone, you know, is showing interest in you that you don't really want to be romantic with and vice versa, I think it's very important to just tell them straightforward and not to like brush it under the rug and be weird and like, oh, why is he flirting with me? But, you know, just telling them like, hey, I just want to let you know that I am just wanting to be friends and I really value our friendship and I hope this doesn't 
mess it up, but um, I just want to be friends. <laughs> yeah, and I also feel like it could be tempting when someone's flirting with you to flirt back just because it could be fun. But I would also advise you not to do that. If you don't want to be in a relationship and you do just want to be friends, don't be doing the flirting game and like reeling them in because mm -hmm. you're making them think like, oh, he or she likes me when really you might not. Yeah, and just some encouragement. I think we've had a couple calls where we've said the sentence, like when you are a teenager, what's going on in your life just feels like the end all be all. Like this mm -hmm. is the end of my life or like I'm never going to find someone else. Like all these dramatic things. Yeah. But just know you will come out of that. Like, I just feel like in your 20s is when you mature a lot more than you are when you're a teenager. Now, this girl, she was very mature for a teenager. Oh, yeah. I didn't feel like uh, we were talking to a teenager. But um, most of most teenagers out there, um, I feel like, feel that way of whatever's going on in their life right now. It's like the biggest thing ever to them. But just to have eyes outside of your little world that you're in and know that there's so much more so much bigger like you're going to meet so many more people and yeah hope for her that she you know will find someone that she feels like god's calling her to and that he's called to ministry like she's wanting i called it one itis you called what that where you feel like there's that's the one person and there's only that one person and there's no one there's never going to be someone else wait are you a believer that there's like multiple matches for you out there oh i'm not necessarily saying that like i do believe that there's but do you think that <laughs> <laughs> no i think there is one person that god intended you to be with i don't that's just my personal belief like i believe god intended me to be with Sutton and there's no one else that he intended me to be with do i think that people can find someone else in the world that they can marry and have a happy life with together? I think so. But I think there's people that, uh, it, it's easy to get stuck in this one-itis mindset, like, oh, he's the one, or she's the one, and there's no one else, and I can't, I, this is gonna be, my life is over. But that's just silly talk. So this was some little bit of advice that we gave this girl that we were talking to, but we also told her that it would be really cool if you guys could help too. So if y'all have anything that we didn't mention that you mm. think would be helpful or a good idea for oh, her, yeah. we'd love for you to put it in the comments because she said she's going to be reading through them and hopefully we can all just help each other. But anyway, guys, so we're actually getting ready to head to the beach tomorrow. Woohoo! Our first family trip of three to the beach. So hopefully... Five. Or, yeah, family. I'm, I'm <laughs> only thinking about the boys. Yeah, our first family trip of five to the beach. And uh, we're going to try to vlog it if we can, but we'll see. That was Nate and Sutton. So <laughs> you're supposed to say this is. That's what you always tell me. No. This is Nate and Sutton. Because you're like, we're still here. Like, this we're on the camera. Sutton. I always feel like you always do that. And I feel like it's weird. You I, always tell me to say it no. that way. Okay, whatever. You came up with this. All right, guys, that was Nathan Sutton sowing seeds of truth, love, and inspiration one view at a time. <laughs> and that was how to be just friends. <laughs> I guess that would be weird because you say that, I say that was when I'm talking about the video title. So you should say that. No, I think this is right. Oh, my God. Y'all tell us that, too. Is it this or that?